Hello floss through friends. This is Laura from Stitching by the Shore. This is a channel all about cross stitch with a little bit of paper crafting thrown in too. Uh, I am doing another one of my special Flossmas videos over the holiday season. So in December, I usually try to do four, five-ish videos, a little extras to talk about stuff that I've done in the year or what's coming up in the following year. And so today I thought I would talk about what I am stitching or starting, I should say, in 2024. So if you are new, I wanna say thank you so much for pressing play on this video. This is a special video. This is not how my videos usually look. Uh, if you wanna see any of my regular videos, uh, go back to the list, and I do my very best to put out videos every Friday, sometimes Saturday if the upload process goes off, but that's what I do. So I would love to have you join me over on just my regular videos and uh, just be a part of the stitching community. And if you're a turning stitching friend, if you've uh, clicked on this and are going to check out maybe what I'm planning on starting, hopefully, next year, then thank you so much for being here and uh, watching the video. If you have specific plans that uh, you wanted to share, I'd love to hear them. If there's some of the pieces that I've got that I'm showing that you want to stitch as well, let's talk about it and maybe we can stitch them together next year. Um, I found, and I don't know if this is the same case with you, so in the process of trying to do this video, I... I went through, I pulled out, I have, I don't have my charts are completely 100% organized the best that they could be. I have new charts in some magazine holders, but I don't have enough magazine holders for all of the charts that I have that I've not stitched. And then I have them in a few other places. And as I started to pull things out and I went through all of my charts, really just trying to be thoughtful about what I have. I realized that I have an awful lot of charts to stitch, more so than I realized, to be perfectly honest. And as well, to be perfectly honest, if something comes out next year that I love it, I still will buy it. So <laughs> I am putting that caveat on that. But I realized that there's a lot there and then you're playing kind of a game of this or that. You know, what, what piece pulls and calls to me more? So having said all that, these are the ones I chose at this moment that doesn't account for anything that comes out in 2024, that doesn't account for, maybe I see somebody stitching something I own and I hadn't thought about it, but I'd love it. And so maybe that trades out something else or just gets added in. Um, I have I did not account for trading cards, so I host trading card swaps. And so those are starts and finishes within the swap period. So there'll be some of those. I am showing you one chart that I do wanna do something for for the winter swap, but there'll be hopefully other swaps. So I don't know what those are. Um, ornaments for my children. I've been trying to stitch. This is the second year that I've tried to do ornament for both Megan and Connor. And so those will be decided probably until closer to the holidays. So you can see there's a lot of things that could change. But at this moment, as I was looking through, I looked at some things that called to me, things that I would like to try, um, that kind of stuff. And that when I was looking, then I had to go through, I was up very early this morning. So then I went and I flipped through all, I have all my digital patterns on Dropbox. And so then I was literally just flipping through the entire folder thinking, boy, what from there do I want to stitch? Because I don't want to forget about them. I have a tendency, I feel, I don't print them all out when I get them. I put them in my Dropbox so that they're there uh, safely. But then you have to go back and look at them, right? So this is all kind of, it's a good lesson to see what do I have and to kind of go from there. But it's also the idea that I am going to, nothing is ever rigid or set in stone. Um, everything is very fluid and I will not worry about if I have to change plans, if I have to pivot or change a direction on what I'm starting or things like that, um, because this is just for fun. So that's how I look at it. And um, I also, just if you are new uh, to my channel, I don't worry about how many starts I have, to be honest with you. I could have 600 whips. I don't, works in progress. Um, I could though, and it, it really wouldn't upset me. It wouldn't bother me. I wouldn't feel overwhelmed. I actually kind of like when I have a lot because I have 
tons of choices. And so it's fun for me to just kind of shop my projects and say, okay, what do I want to stitch today? And it's kind of fun. And sometimes it's like doing something brand new all over because you may not have done it in that year. So having all kept all that in mind, I picked about 35 to 40 projects that I thought would be fun to start this year. And, um, let's get going and we'll see, we'll see what you think. We'll see if there's anything, like I said, that you would like to stitch potentially to, and, uh, let's talk about it. All right, so the very first one is my New Year New Start, and I've already announced this one if you follow my channel. Um, I am going to start Fish and Ships by Long Dog Samplers. So my thoughts on this one, and most of my patterns, I am so impressed when people show what they're stitching in the next year, and they have fabric already all picked out for all those pieces. It's always amazing to me. I am usually a couple weeks before I plan on starting it or sometimes right before I start it then I kind of go through my fabrics um to kind of see what works for this one because I knew I wanted to do it on a blue with a white floss I have been looking and looking and looking and these are the two that are my final options this one right here is an opal if you see I don't know if you can see how sh that, that it's shiny but there is the opal shine to it I'm not wetted it wedded to it being an opal. So I just thought this color was kind of oceany and nice and I don't know which way I'm folding it now. <laughs> and then I recently had gotten this one and I there's something about those blues that I do like too. So what I wanted to do, if I hold these two up, is I wanted to stitch it with, I wanted to try something new. I wanted to try floche. So I've, I got some floche and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do practice stitching on both of these. Maybe I'll take that top corner and start it on both of these and see which one feels better with the with the floche and that might make my decision for me because I think it would work on both of these slightly different looks um, they're fantastic fabric so I'm not worried about if I if I didn't choose one it, it will get it'll get chosen for something else so that's my thought on that um you know I don't have my stuff set for this. Usually what I'm doing here is I have this little container and it usually sits behind me uh, if I'm in my other section and sometimes you can see it. And so when I'm pulling things out to show you in the course of my regular videos, that's where it comes from. And what I do is I have them set in here kind of loosely by month and my ideas with that. So that would be January 1st. That was the, the first start that I wanted to do. Okay, so I'm looking at my stuff here. Okay, so next would be I have done two out of the four seasons with these, Oops. and this would be the third one. And I have done, I recently did Fall Blessings, so Winter Blessings would be the one that I would do. This is from Leela Studio. And I kind of like, if you if you look at it, it's got kind of a pink-ish fabric. I don't generally ever do the called for fabrics, so... But I do, sometimes if I really like the look of it, I, I use that as a guide. So I'm gonna go through my pinks. I don't want it too pink, obviously. I'd like a light pink. So I'm gonna see what I have. And um, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in the back so that when I've worked my way all the way through, we know I'm done. Uh, I do like that idea of the pink. I like red on pink. I think it would look pretty. My other option would be kind of a blue for winter, right? And that would give it a completely different look so maybe but I think I would like to pink. if I can't find a pink I like I'm not gonna buy one I'll go with some sort of blue instead okay this one I think this is the most adorable Ruskin's penguins one can't one can't be angry when one looks at a when one looks at a penguin by modern modern folk embroidery I think this is adorable I would stitch this probably with a gray or a blue that and maybe one of the two that I don't use for long uh, for fish and ships, I think would be really cute to do this on. Something that those white snowflakes and all that white's gonna show up on. I think that would be adorable. I know a couple people have said that they haven't stitched this and they're interested, so maybe we'll do a penguin stitch along. What do you think? So that is coming up hopefully in January. And then let me see. So I, I do not have a list of necessarily items that um I, you know per month I'm pretty much just going through here so as I go back and forth there's only 
maybe six or seven on the iPad. Most of them are in person. This is a recent um, release from Satsuma Street. And I would love to stitch potentially the owl or the fox. Aren't those adorable? The theme for my winter, this, this um, 2024 uh, current trading card swap, which is due February 1st, or to be shipped by February 1st, excuse me, uh, is winter. So I thought those two were, would be adorable. This is two, but this might be too big for a trading card. I haven't done any of the measurements, but when I saw this chart come out, I thought this would be adorable for littles. I think even just doing the blocks, whether it's the fox or the owl, for example, those would be cute ornaments, I think. So I don't know 100% sure. I don't have an idea yet what I'm stitching with those, but at least one of those. We'll see what my timing is like. You know, you say all these grand plans and then all of a sudden time gets away from you, right? And so then you're stitching potentially different things or not what you wanted. So that would be January because like I said, uh, I think I have to look at my notes, but, and I'll, and once the new year comes, I will give you the guidelines again. There is a swap video from Flossmas. It was the very first one. If you wanted all the information, but I'm 100%, no, I'm 99% sure. If I was 100% sure, it wouldn't be an issue that the, the shipping date, I'm asking everybody to ship them by February 1st, and then I will mail out I'll pair everybody and mail out for March 1st. So I want to get those done, though, before it comes time. I don't want to be last minute trying to do them. The only other January start I'm going to do, and I want to say it's January 26th. And you know what? I want to make myself a note. I have a bunch of different pens here, but I'm not sure which pen to use. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna, of things I want to put down. So I want to put down the flag stitch along info on on the description box. So if hopefully if I've talked to you about things, I will try to make a note with them and then they'll be in the description box. So Wombat Hollow Crafts and Devon Devonally Designs uh, are hosting a 2024, I believe it's Quaker Flag SAL. So if you were to go to Vivsters uh, and look at all of their different flags, they are basically, uh, doing a stitch along where you stitch the flag of your choice, presumably of your country. Uh, there is also a black work non-flag one, but it is the same shape design and it's all black work. I Well, I don't know if it's all black work, but it's cool. I, I've seen it. I, of course, am going to do the U.S. flag because I am located in the U.S. and I have no clue what fabric. I'm not necessarily thinking, uh, I know a lot of people do the flag stitches, uh, a lot of flag stitches, for example, uh, like One Nation, on things like Vintage Country Mocha or some sort of uh, beige neutral. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I, I don't know what I want to do it on. Maybe I could do it on, I want everything to pop, including the white. Maybe I try like a, I'm not even going to say because I'm not sure yet, but um I believe it's the 26th. The information will be in the description box if you want to potentially join along. They are, I don't know how many flags that Vivsters is up to. Uh, she has been creating flags according to requests. So I think when this stitch along was first announced, there was four flags in her store. And now I think there's over 20 options. So there are lots of options. And if there was one you were interested in, I'm sure you could reach out and ask if it's something that would be available. So maybe check that out. All right. So that is January. Those are my plans for January. Uh, I'm super excited about the starting stitches and um, hopefully I can get to them all. February. So the first thing when I think February, the first thing I think of is Carla from Carla Being Crafty. I'm going to put her name down to, to link her channel. Every February, and this is, I don't know, maybe the fourth, fifth year. I'm not sure now. She does a hashtag B, B E E, be my own Valentine SAL stitch along. And the whole idea is in the is in February to stitch a bee. Now I've started them in February and it usually takes me, I've done it for two years now. It takes me way longer than that. I have gotten both of them done in the course of before the next one, basically. I've already finished this one this year. 
this year I picked, I have a few B options and I wasn't sure I was gonna go where I was gonna go. But when I looked at my patterns, I think this is adorable. I have never stitched a quirky Quaker. Um, Darlin and Whimsy, thank you. I'm thinking in my head. <laughs> I'm thanking myself for remembering. Um, <laughs> but I thought this would be cute. This would be an adorable option and it would fit with Carla's B theme. And I could actually almost, this might be fun to do as an ornament actually for maybe my kind of summerish tree or hanging ornament style in the summer. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I, I could see doing that over doing a uh, scrapbook page, but that would be my second option, obviously, if I don't do an ornament. So we will see. That is that is the very first thing, though, in February I will start. And I will most likely, I would bet you, I would probably do a light green background on that for fabric. That would be my guess. Now this one, and I did not, I chose not to take the patterns out of their plastics just so that I could keep everything neat in here. I think you get the point. I will do my best to angle it so that you don't get glare. But it's actually cloudy today, bright but cloudy. So this might be a great, uh, great time to be to film in this because I might not get a lot of glare. This stitch right here is V is for Valentine by Heartstring Samplery. And Mary from Mary's Stitching Corner, and let me write down Mary's name, stitch this, hmm, I'm not sure when she showed the finished product. Mary's finish was beautiful. And when Mary was finished, uh, she knew how much I loved her finish that she asked if I would like to stitch this. And so she passed it on to me and I love it. So I've been waiting for the season, even though I'm not necessarily a seasonal stitcher, I thought this would be fun in February. And I just remember thinking how gorgeous the colors looked on her finish. So this was a no brainer when I was looking through. I want to start that. And that's small. So those first two are smalls. I have a mixture of really giant projects. And then I try to throw in a decent number of smalls. Now this one, I think I might do in February, but I'm not 100% sure. I got myself a couple of Luca S patterns. This is the smaller of the two. I figured, let's start smaller. And then I can, <laughs> hopefully I like it. <laughs> And then I can work on the bigger one. They're both very similar, kind of uh, snowy scenes with some red. I want to say the other one might have a, a red cardinal in it. Um, this is called Red Mailbox. I thought this was really cool. So I'm thinking I want to give this a go. I would use everything. You know, it came as the kit, so including whatever fabric that is, um, and do it all on that. So any tips or tricks? If you've done Luca patterns, Luca S patterns before, I would love to know. Um, I already have probably 15 full coverage. Again, doesn't bother me. Don't care. I don't have specific large full coverages planned for next year's start, but I can almost guarantee I'll start some more. So it, for me, it's the journey, to be honest with you. So I'm not in a race to get pieces done. It's the joy of the stitching that uh, really brings me the happiness and the calm and the peace. So uh, I'll just keep starting as I go. But anyway, I thought this was fun and I thought it was pretty. So that will be my very first, that's my very first kind of kit kit. I've never done a dimensions. I got to tell you, I'm a little intimidated by having to do different numbers of floss and halves and all that kind of stuff where I just, I, I just like to kind of go along and do kind of, it's a mental kind of piece thing for me. But I just thought those were so pretty and I said, let's give it a try. And, uh, I think to boot that one was on sale. So it was a little extra incentive. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so that is February. Those are my, oh no. Okay. So I have one more. This one's a secret though. So don't tell Mo. Um, I'm going to show this from a distance. This is, um, for those of you who do not know, Mo is a huge Aston Villa fan, uh, English football slash soccer. And this year is also our, this year will be, 2024 will be our 25th wedding anniversary. So, you know, I know Mo. He's not going to want something fancy or things like that. And yes, there are a couple sea otter full coverages, but I don't think I have it in me in the course of a year to do that much. So I found, and I found two versions of this. This is basically the Aston Villa logo. They're almost exactly the same. I want to put them side by side and see which one 
I like slightly better. And then I want to stitch this for him for our anniversary. Now this blue is all stitched. I'm wondering if I can find, so Villa is the claret and blue colors. And um, if I can find a blue fabric that matches Villa's blue, and Mo owns a, jer a Villa jersey, so I'm gonna sneak that jersey one day when he's not here, and I'm gonna put it with all my blues. If I can find a blue jersey that um, works, then I what I might do is anywhere you see white, I'll stitch the white and then keep the blue as the background. That's an option because that would significantly cut down on the number of stitches. But that's something I've got to get on and start to figure out because I do want to get it. September is my anniversary, the end of September. So if I start at the beginning of February and I kind of give it dedicated time each month and I have plenty of stitching time when Mo wouldn't see because I think it'd be really fun to be a surprise. And I think that would be something that I could finish probably as some sort of stand up. Mo has different um, shelving units in his like bookcase, open shelf kind of things in his office because he works remotely. And uh, that's where he put the, the sea otter that I stitched for him last, was it this year or last? I don't remember. So I think I think that would be something that he would put up on his uh, bookcase shelving too. I think it would be a lot of fun. So, and I think that would be something he wouldn't expect and it'd be kind of a fun anniversary gift. So that's my goal. So shh, it's a secret. Alrighty, now let's move on to March. Now, I won this actually, and as soon as I as soon as I knew I wanted, I knew I wanted to stitch it, and I wanted to stitch it in March. So this is called Life Happens from Georgia Girl Stitching. When life happens, beer helps. We're O'Shea's, so I'm just gonna leave that there. <laughs> you can get from that what you will, right? So anyway, I thought this was so much fun. I love this pattern from Georgia Girl, and uh, I think it'll be super fun to stitch it in March. So. Don't know fabrics on that one yet. I don't know. Now, this next one, this, I, as I was pulling out, I knew I wanted to start these this year, but I don't know how I want to tackle all of them. This is a series. So this past two years, I have been stitching the Quaker, the Season Quakers from Jardin Privé, and I am almost done with Autumn. I... I really would like to finish it by the end of this year, but I just don't think I will. I think I have too many stitches to go. But what I did with all four seasons was I chose four different color fabrics that matched the season. And then I had one floss. I used DMC 823, which was a navyish blue. And I stitched all of them monochromatic, monochromatically with the different fabrics. So this, and, and that's how they were kind of charted. They were charted that way. This is not charted that way, but I think I would really like to make all of these monochromatic and do the same sort of thing. So if you're thinking March, it's the first day of spring. So I pulled out spring as the first one. So this is Spring Awakens and it is from Summer House Stitchworks. I love these. So my thought is that I would find four fabrics. Now for the Autumn Qu the the Jardin Privé Quaker Seasons, I chose kind of brighter fabrics for that season. I'm debating if I want to do that again, or maybe I go a little bit more pastel-y, a little less vibrant, but again, probably the same sort of shades that I did, uh, but do these and then have one, let me show you, that's spring, have one floss, this is summer, that would basically, I would stitch all of them with that one color floss. This is autumn and this is winter. I am thinking since I did the first series with 823 and navy, I was thinking maybe more of a hunter green because I'm thinking of the colors that I would use. Pinkish for spring. I did a yellowish for summer. I did a peach for autumn and then I did a bluish for winter. I think some sort of really nice green, a deeper green would look nice on all those colors. And I think it would be a lot of fun to just stitch these monochromatically. So I am gonna start with spring, but my my dilemma was originally I was thinking, oh, I'll start each one each season, but I don't know about that. That might be a bit too much because I don't think I could stitch. They're not huge, 
For example, spring is 118 wide by 88 high. They're probably actually smaller than the Jardin Privé ones. So until I get stitching with it, I don't know. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do spring and then I'll wait and do autumn and then, you know, kind of skip ahead like that. And then when that's finished, then I'll go back and do summer and winter. I don't know. But spring is a definite. The other seasons, I'm, I'm going to put them at the back of this box once I have all of my uh, stuff figured out. And then what I will do is um, figure out um, what the plan is with the rest of those this, this year. If you have a, if, so that's what I want to do with the colors. If you have a color floss that you think would look fabulous with that, I would love to hear. I do have the DMC card, so I'm going to pull that out and start playing around and pulling out the flosses because I'll do DMC. You know I like my DMCs and I have my DMC bin, so I'd have all the colors that I could play with. So, but I would love suggestions. I really love to hear from you as well. Then the other one in spring, I stitched winter and autumn for Carolyn's balloons. So I still have spring and summer. I'm ready now to balloon again. I was kind of ballooned out before. So this is spring, isn't that beautiful? I just love the colors. And that's from Jan Hicks Creates. So that could be like a light, well, I was gonna say it could be a light blue. What I could do, what I would do, cause I've thought about this, is what I stitched, autumn in that I might stitch that fabric for spring and then what I stitched winter I might do that same fabric for summer I'm going to floss toss and if that works I think that's what I'm going to do so that it'll be a nice cohesive set when they're all done okay let's go to April so this is a cute one and it's called spring basket it's got bunnies it springs April to me and it's Crosetta Go Go I'm a huge fan of Crosetta Go Go I have quite a few I have way more that are in my wish list at any given time, <laughs> but uh, I thought this would be fun. And it is a smaller one. So again, I want to mix smaller pieces in with some of the larger pieces so I don't feel completely like I'm not, I, I do want to get finishes. I, I get a sense of accomplishment from finishing. I don't have to finish everything, but a finish every once in a while, I'm, I'm coming in. I think I've gotten at least 30 finishes this year. So I would like to um, at least kind of keep that up. Yes, I am starting more than I'm finishing each year, which means my project list will continue to climb, but that's okay. One day I'll have a three hour project parade video for you. I don't think this year, but some year. Now you saw already the winter blessings. I also have this set I've done summer and I would like to do spring blessings. These are fun to do and they're small. I was able to do this one. I did it actually last year for cross stitch camp and I was able to do it in the month of June. So we'll see. That one is the one I wanna do and I'm not sure about the fabric. Summer I did, what did I do summer on? I can't remember, it wasn't this fabric. I'd look and then see what spring, what colors those colors are that jumped to me. Okay. The other thing that I thought for April, which would be a lot of fun, and I don't know what yet. For my birthday, Megan got me the Cross Stitch for the Earth um, book uh, by Emma Congdon, which is Stitch Rovia. April is the month of Earth Day, so, you know, this is perfect. And, you know, I was kind of looking through. I don't necessarily know which one I would do, um, but there's so many of them. I'm just kind of flipping through as we go here now. There's so many of them that I actually really love. I'm just not sure what, I think there was one near the back that I was thinking of. Um, I don't remember now. But I think I would like to, I would like to do one from this book. At least one. I'd like to get them started. There's several in here that I like. And uh, you know, until you get started, they don't get stitched. And I mean, Megan, Megan went to the trouble, found this herself for me. And I would like to, I'd like to, you know, take advantage of that gift from my daughter and uh, take, take a little stitch from it. So that is April. Now we're moving on into May. This one here, I'm a child of the eighties. I'm just going to say that right there. 
So if you two are a child of the 80s, you'll know why this one is one I have to stitch. This is Talk To Me Goose. It's from Dirty Annie's. I have to check the dates because, you know, this is, this is what, 30, oh, it better be no more than 30 years ago. <laughs> oh, we're almost 40 years ago. Oh, please. Anyway, we're almost 40 years ago from when I think this came out. I think it came out in 1986, the movie. I was a junior in high school. Well, in, if it came out in spring, I was a junior in high school. Because I want to say that summer we watched, we saw this movie about a zillion times. And, and I'm not kidding when I say that. And I, I think it would just be perfect. I'm almost sure it was May when it came out, but I'm not 100% sure. I need to start this in May. Just to kind of take a step back. Would it, so if next year is 2024, so that'd be like 38 years. This could be a nice, easy stitch. I actually, I would scrapbook this and I have an idea. I don't know if it'll work, but I have a cute idea of what I think would be fun to scrapbook it with. So I'm not going to tell you in case I can't do it, but stay tuned on that one. Okay. This one, um, this is called, what is this called? Quaker Blue Whale. And it is from Samplers Revisited. And I am rapidly realizing how much I love Quakers. They are becoming one of my favorite things to stitch. I would stitch the blue. Love, love, love that. And then I, I think I might do kind of, I don't know if I would do a real a light blue or I might even do like a gray. I think that would look really cool. So both Talk To Me Goose and this, I believe uh, Megan from Georgia Girl Stitching is stitching both of those next year. When she was doing her plans video, I was I kept saying, oh, I like that. Yes, I wanna do that. Yes, I'm doing that. It was so funny. So. Uh, you get a chance to see her beautiful take on pieces because she has an awesome eye for color of fabric and floss. But uh, you might see this in a couple places if you watch Megan and myself. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I do have the Quaker Crab that I recently got from Salty Yarns in Maryland. And um, that will be for another year. Only one this year. So that would be May, again, as we're going with May. All right, are we up to June at this point? We are up to June. I have I have so many Madame Chantillys that I have not stitched. I have several tear trays, and have I stitched them? Nope, but I, do I want to? Yep. So, ironically, this is not a tear tray. This is called, what is it called? Summer Corner, and I live by the beach. I love everything summer. I just thought this was cute. So I am going to jump into the Madame, Madame Chantilly pattern pool, and this will be my first one. I do love all of, like I said, I really do like her tiered trays, and so I think it would be a lot of fun to stitch those two as well. So that is June. I pulled this one out as well. I'm not sure I can back to back. This is the summer version of Carolyn's Balloons from Jan Hicks. Uh, I could see starting this on the first day of summer. Kind of like what I did with some uh, quick summer Quaker from Lila Studio this past year. I just don't know if I want two balloons going at once. We will see on that. So this one may or may not get started in June, but I put it in the list because I would like to do all four of them, get them done, and put them as a collection in the scrapbook. All right, July. So I have... Two pieces that I think would be fun in July to be that were Christmas related. So I have this one right here. Um, ironically, it's Winter Wishes and Snowman Kisses, so it's not even Christmas. But, you know, it's close enough by Primrose Cottage. <laughs> uh, I've, I've done a lot of those wishes and kisses. Uh, well, not a lot. Two or three from Primrose. And they're fun to stitch. They're small. They're quick. They're easy. So I thought that would be fun. So I have that in the list. And then this one is not... A Christmas in July one. This is from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. Freedom Quaker. I like her little Quakers. I've really enjoyed stitching. I've got one on the go and one finished. And I've enjoyed both of them. I have several of them. I don't have the months, all the months. I've seen several people stitch them. Uh, I don't know if I would do the months necessarily. But I do like the different ones. I think I have, for example, Halloween. I might have a B one. So I could have done that for next year for 2025 for Carla's uh, 
stitch along, but this one here, and I always, I very, the first, the two that I've stitched so far, I have oomphed up the, the colors of flosses. So we will see if these flosses, you know, it's charted in classic color works, this one, for example, with DMC alternatives, but sometimes I find the DMC alternatives just a little too prim. So I kind of jazz it up a little bit. So that would be in July. I thought that would be fun. And then this is definitely a Christmas in July. You know, I take this out because I actually have the floss already pulled for it. I have been wanting to stitch these for um, samplers from Hello from Liz Matthews. I have, I think one through nine is out and I have all nine of them. I'd stitch the sampler, not the tree. And this would be a, a large collection in the scrapbook when they're all done. I flirted with the idea of stitching them all on the same color fabric. I need to pull them out, look what kind of flosses, because obviously they're gonna be different colors. I've also, I thought greens, to be honest with you. I thought, okay, maybe not all the same, but all shades of green, depending on what the look of this is and what the flosses are. So that's also an option for myself. I need, it's tough to tell because they're not all out yet. But with nine out, I might have some sort of idea. So that would be a July start as well. I I had thought about starting them before this and I just need to get going with them. I, I would never do them all in one year, that's a lot. So um, you just gotta start, right? Then, and is that, so that's July. So you can see some of these months, I only have a couple options for August. For example, I have only two things that I have listed shown here that I think, and then we'll, we'll take it as it comes. This one is called Moonshine from Silver Creek Samplers. Mandy from her channel is Mandy Parker. I'm just going to write Mandy's name down so I can link. Mandy recently stitched this, finished it this year, and it was beautiful. And when Mandy finished, she passed it on to me because I think it is just gorgeous. I love everything about this. And so I would like to get that going. I thought August would be a, a wonderful time for that. So that is an August option. And then my other August option is definitely beachy. I bought this, I think this just came out this past year. I want to say over the summer. And it is Sampler of the Sea from Carriage House Samplings. I think this is so much fun. So I would like to get that stitched. That's really cool fabric they used. That would be really hard to replicate. I have to see what I have. You know, I, I, I do fabric of the months and sometimes there's just fun fabrics that I just don't know what to do with. And then something might pop up that would be really cool with this one. So that would be my one of my August starts. Then we get to September and I am not necessarily a sampler stitcher. You know, there's sampler September, but I like doing ones. I don't know, you know, they're not like, the traditional like samplers that you would see, like the people stitch and that they're named after the person that stitched it, reproduction, that kind of stuff. But a lot of times they're named samplers because they follow, they have a lot of the different elements. And I seem to be drawn to those a little bit more. So this one here is by Blueberry Ridge and it's Sampler Seasons Autumn. So I thought that was a lot of fun. So I had that one in my list. I don't know. This might be fun on like the peachy, kind of like a peachy that I'm doing Quaker Autumn on um, from Jardin Privé, just to kind of brighten up the bit. Because if you have the darker floss, I think I'd want a little bit different color on my fabric. This one is, this is from a magazine, but now you can get them. This is from Punching Your Primitive. And I'm just going to take out the printed, because um, I get the digital version of Punching Your Primitive. This is Seasons of the Heart, and it is Autumn from the Blue Flower. I thought this series was so pretty. I've half-stitched one, which needs to get worked on next year. And so I thought this was so cute. So I thought that would be fun for September. You know, it's got the pumpkin, and it's got the colors of the season. The colors of Autumn are an awesome color season option. I love that palette. And then the other one that I found, and this is uh, called Real Comfort, a Jane Austen sampler by Modern Folk Embroidery. I'm thinking I would just stitch the top part right there and not stitch all the alphabets. Not that they aren't cool and not that it doesn't look great, but I think I just love that little kind of that part right there. I think that's really neat. So that's my thoughts with that one. 
you know that I don't. I don't have a problem kind of mixing and matching what drew my eye to a pattern. That's the part I'm definitely going to stitch. October, I love, well, October is my birthday month. That's when we have uh, the pumpkin birthday stitch along. And I just love autumn pieces and October pieces and all that fun. And they don't even have to be Halloween. I do enjoy Halloween, but they don't have to be. I mean, this one is. This is The Witch from Cottage Garden Samplings. So I liked mm, probably about four of the snowmen this, uh, in this series this past year. And this was one of them. I thought that was so cool looking. I love the colors of the pumpkin. And so I thought that would be neat to start. So that is a start for October. All of them have pumpkins on them. So they actually do, uh, they work for my stitch along. This one is Autumn Dream, also from Cottage Garden. So this was their series of songbirds, I think it was called. I have probably three or four of these. I don't necessarily know if I want to stitch all 12, but I love this one. I love that little pumpkin house and all that with it. So that's going to be an October stitch start. And then the last one, I got this one this year. And this is the pumpkin house from Hello from Liz Matthews. And again, I'm only stitching the top. It's a really cool concept what Liz Matthews did, but I just love that house. That was what I saw that. I said, oh, I want to stitch that house. So that's the part I would stitch. I would not stitch the below part. So those would be October. Oh, and as I'm going along, I'm trying to think. I didn't, I totally forgot about my, my options of digitals. Mm, there's not too much that we missed. What are we at? We're at November, which is perfect because this is one here that I thought for November. What is this called? Mm, you know, I cut off the title. It's by Cherry Hill Stitchery. Oh boy. <laughs> May our lives be full of thanks and giving. So I thought that would be a fun December, no, November one, being that it's Thanksgiving month. And it's not huge. I, I happened to look at the pattern as I was uh, deciding on them. I thought that would be kind of cool for November. And then this is a Christmas one. In November, you're starting to think Christmas. This little guy, Snowman 2023, is adorable. So I thought, how fun would he be to stitch? And again, he's small. Oh, and look at that. They use all DMCs on this one. Well, that's good and convenient. I think that's adorable. I really liked him. The first time I saw him, I said, oh, I want to stitch him. And then I, this is not Thanksgiving, but I, when I was card making and I had uh, an Etsy shop, I had, I had a couple of different designs and one almost had it wasn't peacock, but it kind of reminded me of that. So when I saw this peacock tree from Modern Folk Embroidery, I thought, wouldn't that be fun to stitch in November? And, you know, I, the connection probably may not be apparent uh, it, it, to you, but in my mind, I've made it from uh, past things that I have created. So I thought that would be fun. And this year is apparently going to be the year of adding some Modern Folk Embroidery into my rotation because... This would be the third one of those that I've shown you that I would be adding in. So I'm excited because I haven't stitched a lot of modern folk. So, and I don't know if the beautiful big pieces are just glorious, but I am just not sure I am ready to uh, do one of those big ones or I, I want to tackle one. So this year, as you can see here, I stitched Falala. So we are into December and I would stitch Mary. This will hopefully be finished in my year of 55 finishes in 2020 as we wrap up 2020 through 2024. Maybe if I stitch this early enough in December, it can be a finish as well because uh, that would be fun to have them both on the tree. So that is, and that was quick. That did not take me that long. It's, they're very, they're, as you can see, they're not very big. So that's a really fun one to add in December when things might be a little bit busier, crazier, and you don't know if you have the time. Okay, the last Oh, no, there's two more. The last two in here, and then I want to show you something digital, and that'll be my plans. This one here is called Cozy Into Winter by Jeanette Douglas. Isn't that beautiful? I would just stitch this element right here. And depending on the size, it might work as kind of an ornament. I think all of the other parts of it are pretty, but I don't see them, to be honest with you. When I look at this pattern, this is all my eye is drawn to. So that's what I want to stitch. So there's that. 
Then this one, I have had this one for a while. I've actually had the floss for it for a while. I have it as a digital here, so I don't have um, a hard copy to show you. This is, what is it called? In Invierno by Satsuma Street. So you're not going to see the fun colors, but you know, if you know Satsuma, you know what she does with color. They're bright, they're beautiful, and I have wanted to stitch this, so it's about time. And I like the little pieces because it's like little finishes kind of thing. So I do have that slated as a December stitch. And then the only other thing I have that I have listed, I stitched, I was gonna see, no, I don't have it fully finished yet. Uh, I have this from Shannon Christine. It's I think it's called Cup of Cheer. I have this pattern. I stitched this guy right here. I wanna say this early this year I started it. The penguin mug. I'm thinking that I would like to stitch. Now, whether it's December or sometime earlier, I think I want to do that elf mug next. I thought that would be a lot of fun. If you follow Shannon Christine on Facebook or Instagram, uh, she, leading up to Christmas, released 12 little mini Christmas patterns. I think they're all 30 by 30s. They're adorable. So if you're looking for some small mini Christmas stitches, I would suggest you go either to her Facebook group or her Instagram and they're there for free, I think. Um, and I don't know what her plans are, whether to keep them from free. I think so, because I think some of her other ones, but I'm not going to speak for her. Uh, but maybe check it out just in case, you you know, you might miss out. They're super, super cute. And there's some mugs. There's some gingerbread houses. There's some like cookie shapes. They're really adorable. And so that might be something that I throw in. I'm thinking... Those are small, 30 by 30s. I might pick either the same one or two different ones, and those might be next year's uh, Christmas stitches for Megan and Connor. We'll see for their tree that I stitch for them. Then that would be nice and easy. A 30 by 30 would take no time to stitch. So. so, but that's it. That's all so far that I have in my queue for me to stitch. Who knows? Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put these summer house pieces on the back here so that they are in the same spot as all the others. Uh, this may or may not, there's plenty of room to fill it up. This may or may not as well. Once I start adding glosses in their fabrics, but once they get pulled out, they get pulled out and then I just kind of rotate. And sometimes if I see things that I say, oh, that's a 2025, I immediately put it in the bin so I know for next year. Makes this video easy to do. Um, so those are, those are some ideas, some thoughts. Um, I do not have time. I So I am keeping two stitching planners next year and one is going to be for stitch alongs challenges that kind of thing because I've found last year that I did enjoy doing some of that and then one is just you know daily stitching there's some life stuff in there too but kind of different things that I'm doing with my stitching so maybe I will do a small video on planners and my planners and just kind of show you what I'm doing how I'm tackling it um, if that would be something that might be interesting to you there's not a lot. I know a lot of people do the book of days, um, but I haven't been able to find a lot of options. Uh, I know a stitching friend sent me some pictures, which was really cool to see how she tackles her planning. And, you know, especially if you're doing, if you're doing any of the challenge groups or anything like that, where you have a lot to keep track of. I was originally thinking some sort of binder, but I wasn't really I couldn't come up with what I wanted to do with that. I know 24 hours of cross stitch, they might do some sort of binder thing. Um, but how do you keep them? Do you keep them in, you know, planners? Do you do binders? Do you whatever? So I thought it'd be fun if I showed you just my option. It may not be what works for you or anybody, but uh, it might be fun just to see another way of doing things um, kind of going forward. So you might see that probably not till January because I don't know all of the challenges yet for January. And I'd like to get... In that part, in that planner, I would like to get that all set before I, um, before I would show anything because I I don't have much in there at the moment. Just Bringo has I've started to put the Bringo information in there for Magazine Monthly uh, Cross Stitch Challenge. So uh, once I have some more, that might be fun to do. And the other book, I just need to get it kind of up to speed a little bit for the upcoming year. So we'll see. Alrighty, so that is it. Those are my options for starts next year. Tell me what you think. Anything you want to start with me? Anything you want to stitch together? Or 
Is there something similar that I don't even know about that you want to throw out there for me to look at? Because you know, I'm easily swayed. <laughs> I'm going to throw that out there. I can be very easily swayed. Uh, all right. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you are enjoying this end of the year festivities, whatever they happen to be for you. And until I see you again, happy stitching.